Let's do some practice problems using our new friction equation. A block weighing 200 newtons is pushed along a surface. If it takes 80 newtons to get the block moving and 40 newtons to keep the block moving at a constant velocity, what are the coefficients of static and kinetic friction? Now from that problem statement, we can get a few things. We can get that our normal force must be 200 newtons. We get that the force of static friction, which I'm going to denote by giving a little s, must be 80 newtons. We know that the force of kinetic friction, which we're going to give a little k for kinetic, must be 40 newtons. And we want to know what is the coefficient of static friction, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction. Our equation for the force of friction is that the force of friction equals the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. So if we want to find the force of static friction, we just need to fill in everything we know that pertains to static friction. So 80 newtons equals mu s times 200. Well, this is not too bad. If we want to solve for mu, we just need to divide both sides by 200 and we end up getting that the coefficient of static friction is 0.4. Now, there is no unit on this because you can see in our calculation we had 80 newtons divided by 200 newtons. And a newton divided by a newton, well that just cancels out. So, the coefficient of friction is the only number that we will have in this class that is okay to have no units for. Let's do kinetic friction. We're going to use the same equation, FF is equal to mu times Fn, but this time we're going to fill in everything that we know about uh, kinetic friction. So we'll have 40 is equal to mu sub k times 200. So to solve the problem, we just need to divide both sides of the equation by 200 newtons. Boom, that goes away, and we find that the coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 0.2. Let's do exercise 6. I'm actually going to add a part to exercise 6 because it's not quite a complete question for us. A force of 8 newtons gives a 3 kilogram mass and acceleration of 2 meters per second squared to the right. What is the friction on the block? I also want to add the question, what is the coefficient of friction? Okay, now this is much more of a problem that we would be likely to see on a homework assignment or maybe on a test. To solve this problem, we need to use all of the tools that we always use to solve force problems meaning that we first need to draw a force diagram. On this uh, object, there is a force of gravity going down, and there is a normal force going up. And we're going to go ahead and assume that this is on a horizontal surface, so those two forces must be balanced. They tell us that we are pushing this block, so there is an applied force of 8 newtons. And then we're trying to figure out a bunch of stuff about the force of friction, so that must be pointed in the opposite direction. We're accelerating in the x direction, so let's write a net force equation for the x direction. In the x direction, we have the applied force and the force of friction. And because they are unbalanced, they must equal ma. So we can put in everything we know. We know that the applied force is 8 newtons. Uh, we are trying to solve for the friction force. The the mass is 3 kilograms, and our acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So we know everything except for the force of friction. And when we do the algebra, we find that the force of friction is equal to negative 2 newtons. Great. First part of the problem solved. The next part is what is the coefficient of friction? So if we want to find the coefficient of friction, we'll have to use FF is equal to mu times Fn. Our FF is negative 2 newtons. Mu is what we're looking for, so we'll keep that there. And now we need to fill in what the normal force is. 
The problem does not explicitly give us the normal force. However, by looking at our force diagram, we know that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. So as long as we can calculate the force of gravity, we have calculated the normal force. So to calculate the force of gravity, we will do 9.8 newtons per kilogram multiplied by our mass. And now when we do the algebra in order to solve for the coefficient of friction, we find that that coefficient of friction is 0.068. You'll notice that I dropped a negative sign, right? There was a negative on this negative 2 newtons of friction force. We can drop that because the coefficient of friction is really just a ratio. It's a ratio between the normal force and the force of friction. If you add more normal force, how much will that make your force of friction increase by? So because it's just a ratio, we don't really care about positives and negatives. There's no positives and negatives to a ratio. And remember, this ratio is also trying to describe the surface types. And we don't have a direction associated with tile or pavement or felt or anything like that. So it's perfectly acceptable to just keep the coefficient of friction as a positive number always. Let's do the last example problem. A 60 kilogram skier is skiing down a 35 degree incline where the coefficient of friction is 0 0.08. What is the acceleration of the skier? Now this is a fairly complicated problem, so let's start by drawing a force diagram. Here is the hill our skier is going down, and we'll try to draw a nice little skier on this hill. There we go, there are the skis. Woo, we'll just have... And here's the skier's arms, and they're holding on to some poles. And Maybe the skier even has a cool hat. All right. So there's our skier. Let's draw the force diagram on that skier. That skier has a force of gravity acting on it, and it's going straight down towards the center of the Earth. The skier is on the hill, so the hill must be pushing up with a normal force, and that normal force must be pointed perpendicular to the hill. And this skier is skiing on snow. There is friction associated with snow, so there must be a force of friction. Now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to write a net force equation in the direction that we are accelerating. And since we are accelerating down the hill, we're going to want to write a net force equation for forces that are up and down a hill. Now remember, when we have problems where we are on some kind of an incline, whether it be a hill or a ramp or anything, we want to change our frame of reference and we want to kind of tilt our x-axis and our y-axis. We want our y-axis to now be lined up with the normal force. We want our x-axis to now be lined up with the force of friction. That causes our force of gravity to be pointed off in a crazy direction. And so we need to break that force of gravity up into components. Now the perpendicular component of this triangle, so the one that's perpendicular to the hill, can be calculated by doing Fg cosine of theta, where theta is the upper interior angle of that triangle. And remember, that theta is always going to be the same as the theta of our hill. The parallel component of gravity, this can be calculated by finding Fg sine of theta. This is important because when we write our net force equation, we want to sum up all the forces in the x direction. And remember, our x direction is parallel to our ramp. So we are, need to look at this or parallel component of gravity, and we're looking at this force of friction, because those are pointed either up or down our ramp. So we'll have Fg sine of theta plus Ff has to equal Ma. Ma. 
Now, Fg, the way we can calculate that is 9.8 newtons per kilogram times our mass times sine of theta. Well, we know mass and we know theta, so we're pretty good there. But we don't know the force of friction, but we could calculate it. And actually, I'm not going to write a plus there. I'm actually going to write a minus there because we know that our uh, force of friction is pointed in the opposite direction. So we got to show that opposite direction by using a negative sign. So we're going to put minus there instead. But we know that the force of friction is not given to us in the problem, but we can calculate it by saying force of friction equals mu times Fn. Now, if we start putting numbers into this, we would start with 9.8 newtons per kilogram times our mass, which is 60 kilograms, times the sine of 35 degrees, minus our mu, which the problem tells us is 0.08, times the normal force. Now, we're on an incline, so the normal force is not the same as the force of gravity. Instead, the normal force is the same as the perpendicular component of the force of gravity. So we can find that normal force by doing Fg, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, times 60 kilograms, that's the Fg, times the cosine of theta, 35 degrees. This will equal 60 kilograms times that acceleration that we want to solve for. I know this looks like a very long, intimidating equation, but if we look at it, really everything is a number except for the acceleration. And the acceleration is what we want to find at the end of the day. So let's just do the algebra and get this thing done. Uh, if we do 9.8 times 60 times sine of 35, you end up getting 337.3 newtons. If we do 0.08 times 9.8 times 60 times cosine of 35, we end up getting 38.5 newtons. So that has to equal 60 kilograms times the acceleration. 337.3 minus 38.5, that is 298.8 newtons equals 60 times the acceleration. And divide both sides of the equation by 60, and we get that our acceleration is going to be 4.98 meters per second squared. And that is where we end the problem.